risk management, risk assessment, risk analysis, and risk mitigation. This is really at the heart of what we do. And we have to constantly be on the lookout. We have to keep cycling through in, uh, in the same way that we have to keep cycling through um, business impact analysis for business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning. Um, and there's, there's a, a lot of similarities here. There are uh, a lot of the same tools, a lot of the same skills, a lot of the same practices and processes when we are dealing with the these different and interrelated areas. The assessment, of course, is, as mentioned, just simply, are there risks here? Are there threats here? Are there exploits? Are there vulnerabilities? And again, uh, going through the interrelationships of those terms. The risk analysis is looking at it in a bit more depth. What are the threats? What are the vulnerabilities that can be exploited, that turn those threats into actual risks? And in terms of the risks, how probable is it that those threats are going to be exploited, are going to create specific problems for us? The uh, analysis is, is going to have to be detailed for each threat, each vulnerability, each exploit. Um, they, they are often going to be tied together, but we, we have to consider all of them, and sometimes each of them individually. And then, of course, the mitigation, the, the actual management uh, what kind of safeguards are we going to put in place? Are we going to accept or avoid or mitigate, remediate? Uh, are there controls we can use, countermeasures, safeguards that we can put in place that make, uh, well, that reduce the risk? And of course, yeah, we're, we're looking at risk reduction and when we talk about mitigation and, and remediation, we have controls and safeguards and countermeasures that reduce the risk, but not necessarily to zero, generally speaking, not to zero. So we have residual risk. We've put our countermeasures in place that has reduced the risk. What has it reduced it to? And are there additional safeguards, countermeasures, controls that we can put in place that reduce the residual risk still further. What kind of uh, risk are we left with? And of course the controls always annoy people. This is, you know, back to the knights who say no issue. Uh, this is the um, issue of the security department that th those of us who work in security uh, being a hindrance to the business and and again we've got to ensure that people understand why the policies are there why the controls are there why the countermeasures are there uh, again going back to uh, the pandemic and the examples there. The, you know, stay home is not just mom telling you you can't have any fun. It is to prevent you 
from getting killed. It is to, you know, to reduce the risk of you dying. Uh, certainly the risk of you getting sick. And, and uh, in many cases, as we are starting to learn, actually long COVID may be more dangerous uh, to uh, us personally, uh, uh, to the economy, than people dying. You know, we're, we're going to have to look at that. We're, there's going to be an awful lot of time spent. But, you know, stay home as much as you can. Don't congregate. Don't uh, get in a situation where you can get infected and can infect other people. You know, all of these are, these are important issues. These are, uh, these are life and death decisions. Uh, it is not just, uh, you know, don't have fun. And in the same way, the controls, the countermeasures that we put in place, the safeguards uh, that we are talking about in security are ensuring, trying to ensure, that people are safe, that people are uh, okay, that people are uh, that, that the company is safe, that employees are safe, that that individuals are safe. Very often, uh, and as I have frequently pointed out to um, companies. You should be teaching security, not just to your employees, but to the general public, because uh, pointing out safe policies, uh, safe practices with regard to security in the modern environment with all of the uh, malware, uh, threats, frauds, scams, that are out there um, and the uh, well particularly the malware viruses uh, botnets those types of things that uh, raising security awareness um, is is of benefit not just to the individual and to the general public but to the company to the enterprise because the uh, fewer people who get caught in those malware traps, the fewer people who get infected by viruses, the fewer people who become part of botnets, the less the risk is for everybody, including the companies, the corporations. So, reduce the risk, raise the awareness, and specifically, we're going to start talking about what people do in their different roles and responsibilities within the organization in terms of risk management.